Welcome to uh, the Dungeon Play series, the BDSM Dungeon Play. Uh, for those of you that have been in dungeons before or uh, go to a dungeon to play, you know that you have to have something to carry your toys in. So today is just going to be a look, a quick look at some of the different types of cases and uh, devices that I use to get my toys from home to the dungeon. Uh, when I started out in the scene, I used to have this huge oversized suitcase and I threw all my toys in it. Every toy I owned was in this suitcase. You've probably seen some tops and doms go to the dungeon and they roll in this humongous suitcase and then it takes them 20 minutes to find anything because everything's jumbled up inside. So some of the ways I've done, I've evolved to kind of avoid that is to make smaller toy bags that are designed for specific types of scenes. So a lot of people will use uh, what's called a gig bag. Uh, this one happens to be for an acoustic bass, but you could certainly use one for an acoustic guitar. That makes a really nice toy bag. Uh, this little bag down here uh, is just for tools. It's a tool bag that came from Home Depot, but it's got lots of nice pockets and different things in it. And I generally use this bag to carry all my paddles. So if I know I'm going to do a spanking or a paddling scene, I grab that little case and it's got everything in it that I need. This little bag I use to carry my rope. I've got one set of rope in it and some other devices for suspension and rope kind of work. So one complete set of, um, of rope, I think it, it's about 200 feet total, but they're all different lengths, goes in my rope bag. Now this bag's kind of unique, it's interesting. It actually came from Australia and originally was designed to be a stock whip bag. So the long stock handle would be here and the whip would be coiled here. I don't actually use this bag for whips. I most of the time use this bag to carry um, my floggers and those kinds of things in. Uh, this case right here has nothing but violet wand attachments and my violet wand in it. I think it came from Home Depot as well and it has all different kind of slots and pockets inside and it's perfect for carrying uh, violet wand accessories so if i know i'm doing a violet wand scene i throw that in the back of the uh of the car okay this case was for arrows for bow for people that are into bow and arrows it came from dick's sporting goods made by field locker but because it has slots inside it i uh, in foam, it's perfect for carrying canes. So I use that for a cane case. This is just a portfolio case. So anybody seeing me walking, you know, up to a house or up to a building, carrying that would just think, you know, maybe I'm an artist and I've got, uh, I'm carrying my portfolio of artwork in there. And actually I use it to carry whips and such. Uh, you know, this is a cloth bag. Obviously, it kind of looks like it might have canes in it. That's one of my bags that doesn't disguise so much what I'm carrying. This bag came from a tack shop. It actually was originally designed to be a lariat bag to carry a rope in. But I personally throw a lot of whips, so I use it to carry longer whips that need to be uh, carried in a coil, you could also carry rope in it, which is what it was designed to carry. So over time, my toy bags have gotten smaller and smaller, and they more have a specialty focus. If I know I'm gonna do a whip scene, I grab my whip bag. If I know I'm gonna do a flogger scene, I grab my flogger bag. So I might go with two or three smaller cases for a night of dungeon play, as opposed to wheeling in the oversized suitcase that uh, has so much stuff in it, you can't find what you want when it comes time to actually do your scene. 
So for me, me the, con the chef kind of concept of me's in place, uh, everything in its place, everything based on a theme has been the direction I've gone in later years of dungeon play.